What's up guys? I haven't made a video in a while. You know, life gets in the way, blah, 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 blah. And besides that, I'm not even monetized, so I'll make them when I can. I don't have to do it every day. But I want to, sure, why not? I don't know. But my upload speed sucks. Anyway, I digress. <clears throat> so I'm going to do a short video on the how you close a bolt, how you close the SKS action up without hurting your fingers. Because there's been plenty of times where I've seen people pull back on the charging handle of an SKS and then I close it because it holds itself open. There's a, uh, a bolt catch or stop, whatever you want to call it, in there. It gets held, pushed up and then you uh, they proceed to put their th thumb or something in there, run the bolt closed almost pinching their fingers. Now, since everybody's so crazy about safety, this is about the most safe way of closing it. I saw, well, I actually saw Paul Harrell do it that way, and I'm, you know, give him a pass because he deals with different types of firearms, not so much an SKS. Some people don't mess with them that much, and, you know, and he is a professional. So, I did comment about that, but anyway, um, I'll show you. Here's a Norenko. I'm not sure if the light's very good or not, but it's kind of dark in here. Get a little closer. All right, see? Pull it out, pull it, and it's held open. Because right down inside here, there is a bolt stop. I know you can't see it very well, but there is one. Let me see. Okay, you see the, mag the magazine followers right here. And then you got bolt stop down there which is actually being held up by this little tab on the magazine follower yeah right there that little small tab right there is what's pushing that up and it's spring loaded so if this is down you can see it's still holding it okay some people get in here they'll <laughs> let me see if I can get that in camera pulled back and you push down on it and you got this all this metal in here that can catch your finger and go smash it smash and that's not good so what the way I do it and the way I showed people before to do it and the way I said it on that video or in the comments was you know, pull back it's open all you need to do is pull the magazine and release and now it's out of the way and then close it back up that's it. No finger smashing. No uh, wishing you had a done, hadn't done that way. Done it that way. Sorry. And that's pretty well the, just the easy and safe way of doing it. Once again, that's how you do it. So, you got an SKS? And you try to do it the old, I want to kill my finger way. This way should be better for you. Now these are obsolete designs. But that doesn't mean that they're not effective. Of course some people will go in there and they'll put in a 30 round Doug Bill magazine detachable. Which may or may not work very good. Some people have good chance, good uses with them. Some people don't. But I prefer using the original 10 rounder because it's the most reliable and it's easy enough to throw a stripper clip through it. So there you go. So that's that. Now it is empty. You saw it was empty. There we go. SKS. Now I'm not good with Russian as far as I know, but SKS pretty well stands for, well it's it's semi-automatic or self-loading carbine by Sergei Simonov. So SKS pretty well stands for Samozaryadnyi uh, Karabin Systeme Simonova. Or something along those lines. And uh, people still use them. They're really good. They used to be the poor man's deer rifle. 
because you used to be able to get these for $80 a long time ago and then they stopped importing them so so anyway well you know a standard SKS has the one you know one through ten on the rear side elevator which represents 100 meters up to a thousand meters of course you're gonna have a hard time hitting something really easily with one of these past 300 meters anyway but that in mind the saga that I got actually only goes one through three and then you can pull it all the way back of course for the battle zero which the battle zero is going to give you a range from well the battle zero actually starts out at 18 meters and it runs maybe 100 or 200 and 240 something meters so you got that whole range it's not exactly 300 meters somebody uh, i think it was might have been the savannah savannah arsenal project had uh, tested that out and the battle zero and the 300 meter mark weren't exactly the same so that's why it's a different why it's different otherwise you could just put it on 300 meters and there you go <clears throat> but that having been said my saiga only shows the 300 mark because they figured well you know you can be still set it there's just no marks for it because you're you know you're effective out to 300 meters with these with this round and you know that's where they figured well that's as good as your average foot soldier is going to be able to shoot on one of these anyway if you hand it to them here you go go shoot somebody or you know take out the enemy with one of these whatever and that's how it goes so that's how they did that of course this is the only one i got that has this on it <laughs> okay Anyway, ride back. All right, like I said, here is the Russian Ismash Saiga. With a little bit of surprise on the end, and I do mean the end. Okay. Anyway, it's got a... Uh, I got it pretty well in this, this configuration, because it was already uh, converted from its import sporter style and so see if I can get this on here let me take this out first there's no party going on in here so I don't need to get that off that was on something else Let's see made in Russia He's much. Okay. Yep. So it came up, came just like this, except it had a Magpul pistol grip on it. But I put my uh, hog on it because it fills my hand up a lot better. Um. This is gonna be weird. It sounded weird, but this gun smells a lot different than the NPAP I used to have. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just what it is um, I got it very well sighted in it is empty nothing see it's actually I got this pretty well sighted in 100 meters on the 100 meter mark well I did on 300 I did it in the um, a slightly modified Soviet sight in slightly different than Rob Ski did um, it's like the same thing it's like I think a 25 centimeter square instead of a rectangle so when i shot at the bottom i was hitting the top of the square instead of like nine nine three quarters inches or whatever above the uh point of aim so i was doing it roughly the same way with a different shaped target but it worked out pretty good my problem was where i was shooting at my place out there um once i put it back i had it on the 300 meter mark which like i said this only goes to 300 meter on the actual markings but it can go 
it can go wherever you know, we wouldn't have to go otherwise and then back to the the uh, battle zero so anyway yeah I had a sight I was at 100 meters I had it set on the 300 meter mark and I was hitting the you know hitting the top of the box but once I put it back down on the 100 meters I was shooting the ground so I couldn't confirm at the 100 meters at the 100 meters but where I was at 300 meters pretty sure it's on okay <laughs> but yeah this has uh, a stock I added this on after I got it gives a little more length of pull absorbs any extra recoil if you need to um, got the folding adapter and it helps me because I can still see it I can still shoot it like a pistol and it's got a this is a Midwest Industries front uh, forearm handguard and it comes with this rail and it has a Magpul vertical foregrip on it which came with it too so I was like this is pretty neat so you still got the posts on the gas block where the front or the original sported handguard or the, whatever kind of handguard that is would have hooked on but they took all that off when they converted it moved the like they always do they move the trigger up here and get the get this out of the way I have to excuse my just date I'm kind of because I had to work out the heat today but anyway <laughs> everything's moved forward and then you got the grip on it I really like these whole grips I got one on an AR which is the equivalent of this one it's just it's still kind of skinny like an AR you know it's a little fatter than an A2 grip around the upper portion where your fingers going for the trigger but it is better than a regular A2 anyway this one is large enough that I really feel like I got a good purchase on it my hands are well roughly from about wrist somewhere in the wrist up to my middle fingers maybe like nine inches eight and three quarters nine inches and I got a lot of wrap over so this grip does a really good job that's why I have an easy time holding my uh, Glock 21 Gen 3 full size grip but there's that and it is empty I'm not pointing at you I'm pointing at the camera because you are not behind the camera a lot of safety Nazis out there yes we had to be safe that's why I showed everybody the uh, way to close a uh, empty SKS so they don't hurt their fingers because you want to have good fingers especially your trigger finger if your trigger finger gets messed up you're gonna have to be shooting like this and that's weird very few well I wouldn't say very few but quite a number of people have uh, expressed their disapproval of certain brands of firearms certain companies of firearms and one of those is high point now a lot of people will tell you that even a high point handgun is good it's fine it's built like a tank it goes bang when you want it to go bang and other people are like it sucks it's no good it's not a Smith and West and it's not a Glock it's not a whatever well say hello to my high point it's the old school classic version high point 995 and 9mm nine millimeter I'll keep that out function check well actually safety check nothing in there it's got the <laughs> got the original front rear sights it's got a little rust on it I didn't pay too much for it but I was like you know I may not get a high point pistol because of all the hoopla around it 
but I've heard a lot of good things about the carbines. Now this is not the TS because it doesn't have the tactical stock. It's a classical, classic stock. The same stock that they started out with when they first made these. I was like, well, you know, I don't mind that at all. The shoulder's pretty good. I got it on about 50 yards now. I figure, hey, I probably won't be hunting with it, but it's good to defend, be able to have defense out to at least 50 yards if you need to. Animal, whatever, two-legged animal, four-legged animal, eight-legged animals, whatever. So I got ahead and went ahead and got this. It's not too bad. I mean, I think the way I sit at the bench, I feel the recoil a little bit because of the way it hits my shoulder. Because I got to crank down so far on my table. I got like a white fold-out table. Then I shoot it from the for shoot as a bench. Shoot from as a bench, and works out. I mean, it works out for me. It's just sometimes, I, like for the SKS or this, somebody said, you know, people are saying, well, it doesn't feel like more like any more than like a 22 LR when it goes off. It's like, well, it might just a little bit because it is nine millimeter. It's got a little bit, you know, a little wider sectional density than a 22. But and also the fact that the way I get my shoulder down to it, it might touch it in a certain way and make it I can feel it more than I should. But you know, standing up with it like this, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So there's that. Cheap but effective. The tactical stock version is a lot nicer. You can trick it out a little bit more with, oh, you know lasers and lights and things and stuff and this and that and whatever and I actually haven't cleaned this since I walked since I shot it I'm not sure how many rounds I put through but it was quite a few was as many as a lot of people put out in the range but it's fine got the safety now me being a left-handed shooter some things don't work out too well but some things are good like I don't really well like with an AR if I put an ambidextrous extra safety on it just there and click it um, I can hit my hit the uh, magazine release with my my uh, supporting thumb and I would actually able to hit the bolt release with my index finger and I'll show you that here in a second Okay, now like I was telling you about, left-handed shooters do have a slight advantage in some cases maybe when it comes to operating like an AR. So here's what I was talking about earlier. Here's an AR. Mag release. I hit, yeah. <laughs> Let's try it over again. Okay, let's get the, the uh, sling out of the way. Mag release. Okay, right. Then we got the. I'm going to have to reload. In my case. Well, hold on, I got to actually get. Okay. Now the bolts are. The bolts are being held back. I can reach up, back to the finger. This is one set up more like an old, good old school M16. It's got the A2 flash hider built into it. And things of that nature. Remember when you put the, put your magazine in, shut it in there. Make sure it's pulled down. On, make sure it's locked in. Then you're back into the game. Of course, a little bit of philosophy on defense, heavy level defense. When you have to use a rifle with a decent magazine in it, you want to be trained well to use that rifle at any time, anyway. But in my opinion, you also need to be able to use up close and personal weapons just in case 
he'd be well, well rounded as a warrior or something like that and nothing says get away from me like a one of these <laughs> I got this for my birthday a few years ago it is a SOG SOGS SOG Voodoo Hawk Mini you can tell it's a short handle that's why it's the Mini anyway this in some ways is better than a knife I know some of you aren't gonna believe that or agree with that but that's okay because you don't you don't want to limit yourself to a specific type of weapon unless you're really good at it and can really do some damage with it a knife is good don't get me wrong in this case this is a small tactical tomahawk I've actually added some kind of cord to it this isn't paracord so and then if I can remember how <laughs> yeah there we go use it as a thumb sling Wait, chop with it, flip it around, impale with it, flip it back around, chop with it again. I've seen some videos on how to use these pretty good. <laughs> and let me tell you right here, this makes you nervous. Not, but not you, but the one who you're pointed at. And obviously this end is for penetrating things. You smash through pumpkins, smash windows, cars, um, collapse some skulls or whatever, flip it around to the regular chop. You can chop, obviously. That's going to do quite a bit of damage on soft tissue, let me tell you. The interesting thing about it, the corner of the bottom, though, you can use that as a hook, wrap it around a neck or something, and pull. Like a, like a, I don't know, like I don't know what that would be. A meat hook with a blade, <laughs> a blade hook. <laughs> but yeah, that would, that would not feel good to whomever is on the receiving end of this, or anything like this. You know, the same kind of, pretty much the same kind of uh, deal with the full size, which has just got a better reach to it, you know, get more leverage. Um... It's not my microphone off. Excuse him, please. That was dumb. Capital D U M. Anyway, something like this wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, a knife. <laughs> Let me show you an old knife of mine. Hold on a second. It's not a high-end K-Bar. It's not something that's absolutely high-end, ex expensive. I think I pay like seven bucks for it. But however, I'm sure it'll scare somebody. It's a Bowie knife, of course. It, it's a cheap Bowie knife. It was made in Pakistan. But, this is right there. You can see that. Package 10. Anyway, 10 inch blade. See? 10 inch blade. It's about, what was it, 15? I have 5 inch handle, 15 inches long. Not too many people's gone mess with you holding something like this, even though it is bulky. You know, small, your, your best combat knives typically run a lot smaller. Because they're easier to conceal, and when you when you get them out, they're not so easily seen, and then you can do whatever you need to do with them. But something like this is okay if it's all you got. I must say that. But yeah, a lot of crazy stuff going on out there. We got people who are basically communists who want a go communist government. They've already set up their own place, like in Seattle. Chaz or Chop or Chip or Choop, whatever they got going on there. And the crazy people took over, but they're starting to realize that uh, it takes more than being crazy to run a society. Hmm. Isn't that fascinating?
So yeah, even here where I live, we've had quite a few protests. Um, I encourage everybody out there to get your, get a rifle, handgun, train with it. I know I don't train enough. Nobody trains enough, doesn't matter. Like I said, nobody can be prepared for everything, but you can at least be prepared for a number of things that could happen. You know. Know, know your weapon. And <laughs> I just I just remembered something. <laughs> I had a dream. I had a dream a couple mornings ago. I think it was Friday morning, Thursday or Friday morning. And I feel like I it seemed like I was in some sort of like lecture, like kind of a Oh, it was like a casual kind of lecture kind of deal, and it seemed like John Lovell or somebody was there, and, <laughs> and he, he had something, I forgot, I couldn't really tell what it was, and I dream strange, and I can actually remember them too at times, many times I've had some crazy sci-fi type ones anyway, um, he had something up front there with him that he was going to give away to somebody who got an answer correct, kind of like a prize, you know. <laughs> he, and it's, what was it? He said something about Sun Tzu, you know, the, the author of The Art of War. And <laughs> I don't remember if this is actually one of his quotes. I think it has to be, because I wrote, it's the only thing I remember. But he blur he said Sun Tzu. I raised my hand and I blurred out, uh, "Know your enemy and know yourself, and a thousand victory shall victory shall be yours." And I won. I got that prize, whatever it was. And it wasn't long after that I woke up. I was like, "That's strange." <laughs> but you know, your subconscious does strange things. Basically, I don't know if something's pretty important that happened to you during the day, or you're really been focusing on something for a while, pretty hard. Then you end up. Um, it ends up getting in your subconscious pretty much and you can dream about it. Sometimes, a lot of times they say it's your brain um, blowing off steam, which I can understand that. Sometimes it has to purge the crazy so you don't go crazy. But yeah, especially with all the grab going on right now, it's like uh, <sighs> crazy stuff. Basically what we're dealing with here is a communist attempted takeover of the United States, which not like it hasn't happened before, but now it's just getting worse because of the time we're in, and it's foolish not to have some kind of means of protection. Firearms, knives, other things, and you just don't want to uh, get caught without, with your pants down, so to speak, and Make sure that you're confident enough with what you have. Um, get where you can handle it well. Uh, just make sure that you have the right mindset. You're not killing people if you have to defend yourself. You are defending yourself. There is nothing wrong with defending yourself even when it comes to lethal force. God has no problem with it. The Bible is, doesn't show any problem with it. We shouldn't have any problem with it. Other people just won't go buy guns, own guns, because they're like, oh, they're scared of them, they're whatever, whatever. It's going to make you feel like you're a killer. No. You're not a killer. Besides, in the Ten Commandments, what it says, thou shalt not kill, that was actually translated from murder. Not kill, but murder. It is not a sin to kill, it is a sin to murder. And what are you doing when you're killing a, you're killing a murderer? You're defending yourself. Okay. Of course, we know, you know, obviously nobody wants to do this. You know, no sane person wants to kill anybody. Okay. Nobody does. It's an unfortunate side effect of this fallen sinful world. You have people who want to push their will on you and you have to push back when they try to do that. That's the way it is. Okay. 
There's absolutely no reason to let somebody do something to you that you don't want them to do to you. Whether that's rob you, try to kill you, do other things that I don't wish to mention right now, and or make you take a vaccine you don't want, make you, uh, you know, pledge your allegiance or loyalty to somebody or something you don't believe in. It's not good to do that. Um, don't be a sheep. If you're going to be a sheep, be a sheep to the good shepherd, not a sheep to the world or to the government. And that's pretty much all I have to say on that. And now for the beating of the dead horse once again. This is a clip. This is a magazine. I'm serious. Clip magazine. Clip magazine. Magazine clip. Clip magazine. Magazine clip. Clip. That's not a clip. That's a clip. Magazine. That's a magazine. Not a clip. Clip. Lower magazine. Don't get on the boat. Duh. It's the Russian something. I don't know. It's, I'm getting tired. So I'm going nuts. Anyway. Shout out to everybody who's got me subscribed to. Um, I know there's not too many of you, but it's better than none. So, hang on there guys, I'm still wanting to make videos, I just been busy, tired, whatever, blah blah blah, and I'm, like I said, I'm not monetized, and I'm pretty sure that YouTube would demonetize me because I'm talking about happy pills too often. I'm gonna load up on some happy pills! And, uh, there you have it. Just an added bonus. If we ever go squatching, and they're dangerous squatches, we got this. So, yeah. <laughs> Ugh. There really wouldn't be something you want to tangle with. I haven't personally seen one, but... Oh well. See you guys later. So what do the SKS say to the AK? Because I don't know, because I don't speak Russian.